Hey everyone, it's Deja from crochetheverafter.com. Today is the newest motif of the month. It is September 2016 and this is the bobble flower. This is a three round motif. Very easy. You can use one color or th up to three colors. We're using a J hook, a six millimeter and just medium worsted weight yarn. Very fast, very easy. You can get the pattern in the link. Go ahead and download it and we will All right, get so the first started. thing we're going to do is make a slip knot for our hook. So I always take my yarn and twist it and just reach through and grab the yarn that's attached to my ball and pull that tight and insert my hook and then pull on the tail that's attached to my ball to close that down. We're going to make an open ring for our bobble flower so we're going to do some extra chains because I want it kind of big so we're going to chain six. So we're going to pull through, yarn over, point your hook down to get through nice and easy, pull through, four, five, six, and we're going to join that with a slip stitch in the first chain that we made. Just stick that anywhere in that first V that you see. It's all going to get covered up. Then we yarn over, which is kind of like a layover. It's not really wrapping it around. We're just laying it over the top and then twisting our hook to catch it. And pull through and I always stop because it's hard you can't pull through the second loop you kind of got to push out a little bit turn it and then get through so our first round is simple it's easy to see our nice big hole that we're gonna All right, work so in. to begin round one I'm gonna do a chain one and then I'm gonna do 12 single crochets around the entire um, chain circle that I just made so it's nice and easy to see my hole in the middle so I'm going to reach through, yarn over and pull up a loop and I'm going to pull it on top of my chain. I don't want to do it down here because I'm going to have squish stitches, stitches, stitches. So pull it up top, yarn over, point your hook down, pull through to get through both loops. So we're going to do 12 of those. And because these are on the loop instead of attached to it, you can see I'm running out of room already. I can grab it and just pull it over. So just make room as you go for your 12. All right, I finished my 12 single crochets. So one thing when you are working and you're a beginner, trying to count the front of these stitches is nearly impossible in single crochet. So always turn your work and just count the tops of your stitches. And that's also for joining. Because you have 12, you wanna join in the first single crochet you made and it might get a little confusing over here because it looks like we have a bunch of stuff going on. Which one of these is our chain one? Which one is our first single crochet? So just count backwards till you get to 12 and then you'll know that's the stitch you need to work into. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12. So this one definitely looks like it could be something, but that is just the chain one. If I try to work into it, it's going to be really difficult because there's no... Um, legs to it so that's another clue but just count backwards to 12 and then you know to reach under those top two stitches just like as if you're going to make a single crochet and then instead slip stitch so yarn over or lay over your yarn pull it through and notice um, for this type I go sideways because our stitch is running that way our biggest space is right on that side not pointing down I'm gonna get stuck so sideways push through, then turn down and pull through and you get through nice and easy. All right, so now it's time for the bobbles. So these are really easy to make. The instructions look very difficult, but it's not. It's basically like a DC five together. So double crochet five together, but all in one stitch. So I'll explain that as we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is a tall chain. So we're gonna pull up our loop and just lock it in. And then we're going to start our first bobble. So also when you're looking at instructions, you'll see that it says bobble. If you are just going through the instructions really quickly, you might be like, what bobble am I doing? Or what is a bobble? Look around your instructions. So for any pattern, if you see a new stitch that you've never seen, seen before or a new word, look around for a section that may say special stitches, might be in the abbreviations, wherever it may be it will tell you how to work that stitch step by step. And it's all just yarn overs and pulling through. All crochet is just basically yarn overs and pulling through two loops or whatever it may be at a time. 
So you're never gonna not know how to do these stitches. You just have to take them step by step and it will be easy once you actually do it. So for a bobble, it tells us to yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, in, it'll say in the next stitch, but our instructions say bobble in the same stitch as our tall chain, so that's why I'm going right back in to where we joined. So and then it says yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. And it says to do that five times. So again, yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So if you notice, I'm doing a double crochet up until the last step and then I stop. So that's why it's why I said it's like a double crochet five together because we're just doing this five times into this stitch. So again, yarn over, insert in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. So you can see I have three plus our um, tall chain or the loop that was on our hook. Again, we do the same thing two more times. So we're just doing a double crochet up into the last step and then we stop. So now I have six loops on my hook, that's how I know I'm ready to go. So I have five partial double crochets and the loop that was already on my hook. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all six loops on my hook. So this is where pointing down becomes important because if I try to get through all these at once, it's really difficult if you're not pointing down. So pull through the whole thing and that's our bobble. Very simple just it looks intimidating when you see the instructions so then the next thing we're doing is chaining five so we have one two three four and five and then it says to skip the next stitch so when we look at our stitches this is the stitch we just worked into we turn our work if we're having a little trouble seeing the fronts there's our next stitch that v so I'm skipping that one, and then I'm going to repeat what I just did in this next stitch. So we're going to end up with six bobbles all the way around because we're going to skip a stitch between each one. So again, we yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up. And notice how I'm keeping all of my loops the same size as my hook. I... Um, I'm a writer, so if you check out my golden loop method video, there's yankers, writers, and um, lifters. And I'm a writer, which means I keep my loops the same size as my shaft, which keeps my stitches nice and consistent. So when I work off my two loops, you'll see that these are the same size. I just go at a 45 degree angle to keep those loops the same size. And what that does is it gives all of my stitches the same height. There's nothing wrong with being a yanker or a lifter, but if you're trying to make gauge off of a designer's pattern, checking out the golden loop method might um, help you to do that if you can't figure out why your height gauge is off. So we've got two and we're gonna chain another five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip our stitch again and then go into the next stitch. So again, I'm going to do this five times. And this is what we're going to do all the way around. Very basic once you understand the steps. So just keep going and we'll meet up at the end to join. Okay, just doing the last bobble. And then I just need one more chain five so that I can get back over to the beginning bobble. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of our um, first bobble. So if you look, you'll see kind of long chains and then a little short one. That's the top of our stitch. That's where we made that first um, chain that we're going to work into. Alrighty, now we have just one more round to go. So we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in that same stitch that we just did. And then we're going to do seven single crochets around the chain five. And we're going to do that all the way around, not worrying about working into our bobbles. And that's just to give a finished kind of look to our flower. So we have two, 
three, four, five. You'll notice I'm already kind of at the next bobble, so just pull it over to make room for more stitches. That'll just give it more of a poofed out kind of effect with the extra couple single crochets in there because we only have five chains, but we're gonna put seven single crochets in them. So we're just gonna skip our bobble and we're just gonna go ahead and do another seven. And just continue that around and then this motif will be done. All right, I just finished the last seven. Now I'm gonna join with a slip stitch in that very first single crochet and fasten off. And I just have two ends to weave in. So you can technically do this in three colors if you want it to look more like a natural flower. The You could do like this part in like a yellow and this a color, maybe a green for kind of to simulate the leaves, whatever it may be. Or just keep it all one color because it'll be easy to weave in the ends. But this is a good motif for like a spring type shawl, even though it's starting to get a little bit warm, um, not warmer, colder. We're getting into fall now, but um, you can join these. And if you use different types of yarn or different hook sizes, you can make it in different sizes or use some of my other open work motifs that are kind of like this and create a little piecework kind of shawl. So you can just join them however you want just kind of space them out put little ones and big ones next to each other because this is so movable it will accommodate lots of different sizes being sewn together so you can find lots of different ways like the um i know i have like a mini motif that would work really good um probably like the wagon wheel would work really well so lots of different ways that you can piece this with other motifs or just use it to sew on top of stuff. You can put it on a beanie since winter's coming. Winter is coming. So you put it on a beanie for a happy little flower beanie. The center one I like to go just kind of around the center because it's easy to hide it because it's so dense. But lots of different things you can do. That's good enough for me. Don't weave in the ends if you want to sew it to something. You can use those ends to sew it. But there is our finished motif. So you can either pop the bobbles to the back, like how it is right now, or you can pop them to the front for a more three-dimensional look. And then you have that little kind of bobble going on. Very cute, very easy, very fast. That is our motif of the month. If you have any questions, leave them below, and thank you for watching.